This very simple activity has shown us the importance of an important evolutionary characteristic of the animal kingdom, binocular vision. There are some animals which make do without binocular vision while still having two eyes. These animals have each eye focused on a different view and normally evolution has given them monocular vision because it was more important for their species to see more area than to see better depth. For the rest of us, binocular vision is what helped us to catch a thrown ball easily and what made us miss the catch when we used only one eye. Lack of binocular vision would make simple things like grabbing objects and walking around obstacles much more difficult for us and would not allow us to move as fast as we can currently do now. There are a couple of variations which one can try with this activity. One can close one eye or cover it with a patch and try to run around obstacles. For example, one can go to a children's park and try to run around the different swings there. One will find that they have to be extra cautious not to run into any swing and as a result be able to move slowly. Another interesting experiment which one can try is to bring a finger as close to a sitting fly as possible from the front of the fly. Be careful not to be visible to the fly on either side of its body. You will find that you can come so close to the house fly as to almost touch it. This is because a house fly's vision is restricted to its sides because its eyes are placed on the sides of its head. Hence the fly has monocular vision where each eye produces a different image and the brain has to process only one image for each view. You may have also tried the experiment as described in our variations where you try throwing a ball from different distances and see if you can catch it with and without an eye patch. Binocular vision is when the brain processes information received from two eyes to construct a single visual image. Binocular vision is beneficial over monocular vision because it helps in depth perception. Many kinds of animals have binocular vision. In general, when the eyes of an animal are placed in front of its head, both eyes will see more or less the same visual image. When the eyes are placed on the side of an animal's head, each eye sees a different field of view, giving an overall increased field of view. Some birds can even see 360 degrees without moving their eyes. The benefit of this kind of monocular vision, where the brain is processing only one image of one visual field, is more for prey animals. By having eyes placed thus, they are able to keep track of more of their surroundings and look out for potential predators in effect sacrificing depth perception of the view. Animals with binocular vision, however, use their ability of improved depth perception for grabbing objects in view effectively, which is why most predators have binocular vision with eyes in front of their heads. This is not a rule, however, as it is difficult to find rules without exceptions in this diverse biological world. For example, animals like chameleons have eyes placed on the sides of their head and their eyes are capable of moving completely independently from one another. However, chameleons can also focus both their eyes in front of them at a single point, which is very useful when it goes hunting. The first mention of binocular vision was in Euclid's Optics, written in 300 BC and also in the writings of Al-Hazen, which is about 965 to 1040 AD. However, it was only 150 years ago that Sir Charles Wheatstone discovered the link between binocular vision and depth perception. He also invented the stereoscope, which is a machine that views images of the same scene taken from two vantage points and presents them to the eyes. The observer is then provided a comprehensive view of space and volume. Some scientific terms. A stereogram is a diagram or computer-generated image that gives a three-dimensional representation of a solid object. Stereopsis is the depth perception produced by the brain of visual stimuli from both eyes combined. Rods are photoreceptor cells in the retina which can function in low light. And cones are photoreceptor cells that make color vision possible.
Students should have the basic motor skills to throw and catch a ball. Students should be familiar with a few scientific concepts like image formation by lenses and evolution. Most animals that we come across have two eyes, but that is not what is meant by the term binocular. An animal can have two eyes, yet its vision can be monocular. Binocular vision actually has to do with how many images of the same or almost same view that the brain has to process. If both eyes are focused on the same view, the brain will receive two images of that view, one from each eye, and the vision will be binocular. If each eye sends an image of a different view at the same instant, the brain has to only process one image of a particular view and the vision is monocular. If we speak of the human eye and its construction, we can understand how image formation happens on the retina, the screen of the eye, and how the image is relayed to the brain for processing. This will help us to appreciate the phenomenon of binocular vision. Children under 10 to 12 years old haven't yet fully developed their binocular vision capabilities as their brain is still developing. Hence, they need to be extra cautious while crossing the road or catching a cricket ball screaming towards their face. As we can see, the human eye is spherical and consists of a pupil right in front through which light enters the eye. The pupil is basically an opening, the radius of which changes according to the light conditions and a couple of other factors. Behind the pupil is a lens, which again can change its focus by becoming thinner or thicker to focus images close by or further away. The image is focused on the retina, which consists of rods and cones, two types of vision-specific cells. The rods sense light intensity and the cones sense color. The image which is formed on the retina is relayed by the optic nerve to the brain. The brain then corrects the inverted image formed by our eye's convex lens into an upright image and processes it for light, intensity, color, etc. In the case of binocular vision in an animal, when the brain is relayed two signals of almost the same view, because the eyes are a couple of inches apart, the brain is able to process them in such a way that even a stationary view gives a pretty good idea of the depth of the image and distance from the animal's body. This ability is called stereopsis or stereovision or stereoscopic vision. It allows us to see the world in three dimensions. Having two eyes focused on the same view also has the advantage of continued vision in case of damage to one of the eyes. But in general, an animal with binocular vision will be able to more easily navigate obstacles and grab its object of desire. A human being has a visual field of 200 degrees, out of which 120 degrees is the field of view common to both eyes, and 40 degrees is the field of view specific to each eye. The brain compares these fields of view to come up with the final image that we actually see. The term binocular comes from the Latin word bini, meaning two, and the word ocular, meaning eye. When both eyes of an otherwise binocular animal cannot coordinate with each other, it leads to binocular vision dysfunction. Muscles around the eyes are normally supposed to help the eyes work together, but when this does not happen, the eyes get tired, trying to compensate for misaligned eyes, leading to a variety of problems. Symptoms include double vision, headaches, light-headedness, unsteadiness, light sensitivity, neck and shoulder discomfort from twisting the body to focus, and anxiety. A pair of glasses can often help correct binocular dysfunction. These spectacles can have a refractive prescription or even a prism to correct the problem. There are different types of binocular vision dysfunctions and different tests to diagnose them. Up to an extent, the visual system can compensate for visual disparities, but if the defect is too large, the eyes tend to avoid binocular vision and will usually result in strabismus, which is cross eyes. However, these milder dysfunctions can easily be missed as a source of discomfort even on seeing a specialist. Some applications. Binocular vision is useful when one has to see beyond an obstacle. Imagine a pillar that blocks view from the left eye about what is beyond it. The right eye may be in a better position to see beyond the obstacle in this case. 
This is useful in case of danger and also when a predator needs to prey. Binocular vision allows animals to move quickly, especially around obstacles. Without it, it would be difficult to navigate around obstacles because more caution would be required to estimate the space around obstacles, reducing speed of movement. Binocular vision is what allows us to watch movies in 3D. The 3D glasses filter light to allow only a specific type to enter each eye. The 3D movie is shot in two slightly different views with two cameras and each eye is allowed to see one view. This permits the brain to reconstruct the image in 3D vision. Binocular vision also allows us to visualize stereograms and other 3D images. Like in vision, for sound too, we use stereo or binaural systems, for example, two speakers, two earphones, stethoscopes, etc. The stereo satellite is actually a pair of space telescopes launched from Earth in opposing directions so that they create the best and most comprehensive 3D image of our own sun. It is using this concept of binocular vision or parallax that measurements were first made of the size of the Earth, the distance between the Earth and the Sun or the Moon, and even the distances of stars. This look into the topic of binocular vision has made us more sensitive to the fascinating mechanism by which our brains decode a scene with the help of our eyes. We have a super ability of seeing the world in two views at the same time, giving us an edge over many animals with our brain providing us that extra information on depth. We can appreciate what a complex task the brain has to do to combine two images every second that our eyes are open. Exactly how the brain manages is still being explored by scientists. We were made to also wonder at the intelligence behind evolution which has bestowed most predators with binocular vision and most prey with monocular vision. Let us then continue to play catch and marvel at our own binocular vision. Goodbye.